Our story begins with the biography of the great men of the Lanoa continent. There is one whom the rumor has bestowed numerous epithets and honored with the highest love and respect, and this star of the empire unseen until now. Spiritual magician, unrivaled strategist, the greatest guarantee of all things, the youngest daughter of the Artina family, Evelia Artina. Not only the rulers of the empire, but even the highest demons and spirits bowed their heads before her. All the roads she traveled were strewn with flowers, and the footprints she left behind were her achievements. In fact, on the other hand, she wanted the simplest of things, namely to love and find her little happiness. And it is even said that she had a very strong connection with the man who had been by her side for a long time. And in a way, it can be said that she achieved what she wanted more than anything else in the world. It starts with a girl in the water, and she asks herself if she died, but she can't understand how it happened. And then we go back to the past, where our girl was waiting for something and thought she was very tired. At one moment being in her thoughts, this girl saw something shining like a girl in the lake, and immediately she shouted and be careful and jumped after her in the lake to save her. But she realizes that it is only a spirit as her hand went through her. This girl lost her parents early, and after their death she was taken away by relatives. But it was hard to call it a life, but rather a survival, because she was often beaten and hiding from creditors became commonplace, and study for her was the only hope. Our heroine says that even if her life was more like a scorched desert than a fairy tale flower alley, she still hoped that she could walk on it. But apparently in this life she was not lucky, and now she only wants peace. Suddenly our heroine wakes up and cannot understand what happened and where she is. But then she asks herself if this is the afterlife. And immediately the girl begins to notice something strange. Our heroine started to look around and thought it was heaven. But then she said it must be hell. And maybe it's because she died without paying her debts. But immediately she hears a voice telling her it's not hell. Turning around the girl noticed some guy who told her that this is not hell. And at least he is not here. But our heroine could not understand who it is, and even thought that it is God, and she thought that she cannot say. But it seems that he does not look like a simple man. After words of this man, our heroine thought, and after that she asked him where then she is. But he told her that she is an unusual person, as his energy does not have any influence on her. He asked our heroine if she was stupid, but she immediately began to deny it, and said that she had been told all her life that she was smart enough, but the man said that she was definitely not smart. After all, he had not yet met a man who in an attempt to save the spirit would throw himself into the water and ended up drowning himself. This girl thought that now she was dead and wanted to say something, but this man said that what she saw was a spirit of water and it accidentally slipped into the open passage between the worlds and got into their dimension. The man said that by chance she was passing near this passage noticed his baby and unknowingly decided to rush into the water to save her. And then our heroine realizes that it turns out that she died trying to save the spirit of water. It may look like a completely unfair and insignificant death, but it's not like that at all. Because in the real world, there is nothing she loves and regrets. After these thoughts, she like a fool asked the man if in the end, with that spirit is all right. The man said that fortunately the spirit is fine. And then our heroine smiled and said that thank God he is fine and then she can be calm. But this spirit said that they spirits cannot beware and no one believes in them. The spirit said that if they were in her dimension, they would be doomed because there was no one in their world who believed in spirits. But in an attempt to save his child, she threw herself into the water without hesitation and found faith thanks to which the little girl was able to avoid a terrible fate. After his discussion, the spirit thanked our heroine for saving his child and said that he really very sorry that in the process, she lost her own life. But our heroine smiling said that it's okay because it's all the same and especially had nothing to lose. Spirit said that our heroine cannot just lose her own life because they are those who always repay exactly as much as they received. And since she lost her life trying to save his baby, it means that the payment to her should also be a life. The spirit told our heroine that they owe her, and so they want to give her a new life. And our heroine asked him if he means that she can be reborn, and the spirit said that all this is true. But in return, 
she will forget everything about her previous life. It seems that our heroine was very upset and thanked the spirit for his care, but said that in her life she has never asked God for anything. But there is something for which she is ready to beg him on his knees and ask the spirit if he can make it, so that she was surrounded by the love of relatives. Our heroine thought that if it is impossible, she would prefer not to be born at all. But the spirit put his hand on the girl's head and said that it seems to him that there is no need to ask for it because she is one of those who deserve love. But these words made our heroine's eyes tear. The action of the story moves in some mansion, and immediately we see one stately man who is a duke and whose name is Hugo von Artina, and one boy, and apparently it is his son, whose name is Cedric von Artina, is the second son of the Artina family. Cedric asks his father to rest for a while as his mother will be fine, but Hugo asks his son to stop as he says he is fine, and then the boy apologizes to his father and says, it is all just because he is a little uncomfortable. The boy thought that the father can also be understood, because it has already been seven hours since the mother of the son entered the maternity ward. However, they still have not heard the baby crying, but the boy is sure that his mother and the baby will be fine. Suddenly, in this bustle, a child's cry was heard, and the duke, together with his son, was very much surprised, and the duke thought that this cry was like thunder from heaven. And then we see a woman who is the wife of the duke, and her name is Alicia Artina. Alicia called her husband, and the duke came in, and kissed his wife and said that it was a great happiness because they had another child. But then his wife stopped him and said that as he wanted they had a daughter. The girl was very beautiful and bright, and the duke was very much pleased with the new member of the family and called her his little girl and his daughter and told her that if she had hard times, they would be by her side, and if there were difficulties on her way, he would put him to sleep with flowers, even if he had to cut all the flowers of the world. After that, their son joined them, and at first he was surprised, but after that he was very happy and everyone thanked the little beauty for coming to them. At this time, the very spirit who promised our heroine true love watched all this and said with a smile that they will see each other again and called her child gifted with their love. Some time passed and our little heroine was lying in her crib and thought that she was already bored to death and at this time she began to cry and at the same time thought that she could no longer play in the lookout with these hanging rattles. At this time the servants of the house were very much frightened and could not understand why the little mistress was making such strange noises. But one of them suggested that maybe she had a pain. All the while, the little mistress was screaming incessantly, and one of the maids suggested that the girl must be sleepy, while another said that it was quite reasonable since it was already dinner time. At this time, the little mistress thought that again she would have to sleep, but apparently she is sick of it because all day long she only eats and sleeps. Yes, and goes to the potty. The girl thought that, as the man said, namely the spirit, the memories of the past life every day that the body and mind are not torn, not groundless, but a little more, and she will completely forget her past and become an ordinary child. Our heroine thought that every day is not different from the previous one, but she thinks that it's for the best, and at that time her brother came to her room and asked the maid Vivian if baby is asleep. But our heroine thought that Cedric visits her room too often. Vivian greeted the Lord and said that the little lady had just had a little snack and was going to take a nap. And Cedric said that this was very nice and that he would ask to keep it a secret from his parents that he was coming here because he should be at fencing class right now. He said that even if he had other things to do, it was still very difficult for him to stay away. And he wanted to look at Ava. And then we find out that our heroine in this life is called Ava and she couldn't understand why her brother decided to skip classes for the sake of it. Although our heroine was a little annoyed, she thought that at least once she had to appear cute and started laughing and looking at her brother sweetly. But it was like an electric shock as he shouted to Vivian that he either imagined it or smiled now. Cedric said that without a doubt in the world, there is no one cuter than their tiny Ava, and asked the little girl to smile at least one more time, but our heroine was not going to do it at all and at one moment she thought that the gas comes out, and then she could not understand whether there would be a smell or not. At which point Cedric said their brother had returned, 
And then we learn that from the maids who take care of Eva, she's learned a little about the Arten family. And we go back in time where the maids are talking to each other. One of the maids asks the other, whose name is Margaret, if she has seen that the master and his sons wear bracelets of thread. And Margaret says that she has heard that the master has not sparred with the knights for nine months because he was afraid it might break. There is a popular superstition that if you wear a bracelet of very thin thread until childbirth and make sure that it does not break, they are sure to have a beautiful daughter. And apparently the birth of a daughter, the duke was looking forward to it. So perhaps it is not superstition at all. Our heroine was a little surprised that together with her sons and then one of the maids said that the eldest son Archon went to the north to fulfill the duties of the successor. And the other said that it is very nice that the mistress has such a strong older brother. This servant believes that the two young gentlemen have already become the envy of many young ladies' capital, because already at such a young age, they pay so much attention to discipline and their duties. And wherever you look, just perfect candidates for the role of the next duke. The little heroine was surprised that they pay attention to discipline and duty, because she barely managed to be born in a cozy and quiet family. And then this happens, and she thought that the return of the eldest son of the duke will be like something bad. She figured that everyone would tell her that she was a little insect, and she was part of the seven dukes. A therefore must lay down her life to do her duty, and that she would not be released anywhere until all the books were read. Our heroine thought that she certainly did not hope for a road strewn with flowers, but from a life full of all sorts of unnecessary duties, she would like to give up. And then she immediately began to scream violently, and her servants strong enough scared. The day came when the Duke's eldest son returned. His name is Arkan von Artina, and he is the first son of the Artina family. And the young gentleman greets his parents, and his mother hugs him, and says it is lucky that he has returned safe and sound. The boy asked his parents if nothing unusual had happened in the meantime, and his father said that it wasn't really so. And at this time the boy thought and said that they must have been attacked again. But his father said that he couldn't understand how their Ava could be so beautiful. The Duke said that she is very much like their mother, and when she laughs she becomes a cute, charming girl, and then added that recently the little girl even called him Daddy, but still cannot say the word mommy. And at the same time, the duke's wife said that their little girl has not yet learned to speak. Arkan couldn't understand what had happened in the eight months he had been away. And his father said that Ava was waiting for her big brother and told his son to run to greet his little sister. And young Arkan said he had to report to his father first. The duke said it was true, but he'd never seen his sister before. But Arkan said he had no right to put personal matters before public affairs. And then someone called out to Arkan. Cedric appeared with his sister and told Arkan that they hadn't seen each other for a long time, and Arkan asked Cedric how he was doing, but he couldn't understand what was in Cedric's hands. After a few seconds, Cedric showed Eva to his brother and asked him if he didn't think their Eva was cute. But the little heroine seeing that Arkan had no emotion, thought it wouldn't work that way and had to use her deadly technique. The little girl started laughing and waving to her brother, and he seemed very surprised to see her. But at that time, Cedric asked Arkan if he wouldn't come up. And then he said that he had to report to his father first, and said that they would go, and he would play with Ava. At first Arkan started to think a bit and didn't know what to say, but after that he started to stammer a bit. And at one end he said that if he thought well, this report wasn't so urgent and he could play with his sister for a while. It was nightfall outside and the whole family was sitting down to dinner, and then the duke asked his wife if she didn't think that their little girl didn't look like her yesterday. And then he kissed the cutie and said that today she was even more adorable. The duke asked his sweet wife to give him the eve on his arms. But she could not understand why he needed it. And at this time the sons got involved. And Cedric said that his father was very busy with state affairs. And so he offered to take him on his arms himself. At that time... Archon intervened and told Cedric that he wasn't even seven years old yet, and he shouldn't bother himself so much, and offered to take his sister in his arms. And while their father was looking at them and laughing, their mother gave Ava a fruit to eat. Ava didn't seem to like it, and thought she didn't want to eat the fruit, and thought to whom she could give it. And the little heroine held out the fruit to the boys and her father, 
and at that time their father said that their little girl wanted to give her father the fruit. But one of the newcomers told her father to wait because her hand was pointing in his direction. After that, the second son got involved in the conversation and told everyone to wait because he heard Ava calling him. But their father said that even if it was true, it was still necessary to take the matter seriously. And at this point, our heroine thought that yes, there would be chaos. While the boys were arguing among themselves, the mistress was giving little Evie other fruits, and our heroine thought she hoped that her life would continue to be as peaceful as it is now. After a while, the duke played with his daughter, and then he took Eva in his arms, and smiling sweetly told her that they were going to the imperial palace. But our heroine thought that she did not want it at all. The action of the story moves to the emperor whose name is Carlisle Regulus Arcadia, and his maid interrupts him with a reading and informs his majesty that the Duke of Arton has arrived, and the emperor tells his maid that the duke may come in. The duke went to the emperor and greeted his majesty the son of Arcadia. But at this moment the emperor thought that even today there is a feeling that all the light of the world is focused on the duke alone, because he feels that he is too dazzling. The emperor told the duke that there was no one else here but them, and so they could talk without formality, and asked the duke to sit down and help himself to the citrines brought from the kingdom of Ziaz, a fruit flavored with a mixture of orange and lime. The emperor told the duke that he had thought of him and decided to bring them, and the duke told his majesty that he had a request to make to the emperor, and then the emperor asked the duke what a man who knew almost no cares could ask him. The duke asked to borrow the banquet hall of the imperial palace, but it seems that the emperor's jaw dropped from such a statement because he was very much surprised by this request and asked the duke if he had not misheard and for what he needed the imperial banquet hall. The duke told the emperor that he had heard correctly and that he was requesting his majesty's banquet hall. But the emperor asked the duke if he knew that the hall had been used for centuries only for events related to the founding of their empire or the emperor's birthday. The emperor said that surely every sensible aristocrat knows perfectly well on the blood of which family the welfare of their empire rests, and therefore he believes that no one will object if he is given this right. However, the emperor said that he is very amused by the fact that such a straight man as the duke decided to break all traditions, and you ask for more preferences for yourself, and he thinks that only the love between a spirit and a demon is more hilarious than this. The emperor asked the duke if Arkan was engaged to someone else, but the duke said he didn't understand why he would ask for a banquet hall for Arkan's engagement, because they could have it at the manor. And then he said that his Ava's birthday was in a month. It seems that the emperor was very much surprised, and asked Hugo if he wanted to use his banquet hall, not even for his own wedding or engagement, but only for his daughter's birthday balls, and asked the duke if he was crazy. The duke said that he would need this room when his daughter would go out for the first time, because he wanted to make arrangements in advance. But the emperor told the duke to wait a little. But the duke did not listen, and took the fruit basket, and said that he would take it with him, because he thought that Evie would like it very much. But the emperor in due time remained stone-faced, and said that it was his. Already in the duke's house, little Ava sleeps in her crib, as suddenly someone covered her with a blanket. And in a dream, our heroine thought that she became very warm and cozy, and it turns out that this someone is the spirit that sent her to this family. He told our heroine that she looked happy, and stroking her head, told her to call him because he would be waiting for it. And then our heroine opened her eyes a little. But being sleepy, she did not understand anything, but only asked in her head who this man was. And then she fell back to sleep. In the morning, Eva's brother came to our heroine and woke her up and asked our heroine if she was already awake. But our heroine at that moment thought that it seems that she had a dream, and she could not understand who this man was, and thought that it was Arkan. The brother took his sister in his arms, and said that he was afraid that nothing could be done, and he had to get up. Because today is a special day, and congratulated our heroine on her birthday, while sweetly hugged her and kissed her on the cheek. He said that he hoped that he was the first to wish her happy birthday, because he says that he got up earlier and ran to her room, and it seems that our heroine is really happy because she smiles and looks very pretty. At that moment, our heroine remembered that today was her birthday, 
And a little later, little Eva was already dressed in a beautiful dress and with accessories in her hair. And those girls who look after Eva asked the mistress if she liked it, because his lordship specially ordered this dress for her. Our heroine could not answer because she is still very young to speak. But she was surprised and thought that either Viviana tried so hard or just her face is so beautiful. And at that moment, one of the servants said that she saw that the girl liked her image very much. There were some sounds from the street, and it seems that one of the brothers said that he should put more effort into swordsmanship because he feels that in the future he will have many duels with all sorts of scum. At the same moment, the little girl's parents and her brother entered the room, and they were very much surprised to see the little girl so beautiful, and her mother said that their little girl today is just adorable. And at the same time, her brother approached her and said that their Ava is very nice. The Duke approached his daughter and congratulated her on her birthday and asked her if Daddy was the first and congratulated her. But our heroine immediately began to wave her head shows that it is not so, that let it be so. But he has prepared for her the best gift. After this statement, the Duke, with a smile, took his daughter in his arms and told her that they are going to the Imperial Palace. But our heroine in her head said that she doesn't want that at all, as it is her birthday, and she doesn't understand why they should go to the Imperial Palace. The little girl thought she just wanted a quiet and peaceful life, and began to pray that someone would quiet the family. But at the same moment, the Duke's wife began to wonder that her husband had ordered a new carriage for the occasion. But the Duke said he had to use all sorts of magic to prevent the shaking and scare away the insects. Already in the Imperial Hall, Everyone was waiting for the Artan family, and one woman said that the young mistress is just like her mother, and one man said that she also has golden hair, like rays of sunshine, and in this she resembles her father. One grumpy man said that of course she was the duke's daughter, but that it seemed to him too arrogant to use his majesty's banquet hall for this purpose, and told the others to look at the place where the young lady would sit for it seemed to him as if it had been prepared for his majesty the emperor himself. This man said that even for the Artin family this is too much, but one man told everyone to welcome the duke and duchess, their sons and the young Mrs. Arkin. The Arkin family entered the hall and one of the sons was holding little Ava in his arms, and she looked like a princess from a fairy tale. And suddenly the emperor showed up, and someone said that his majesty the emperor had arrived. The emperor asked everyone to calm down because he had just dropped by to wish his daughter a happy birthday. And then he approached the duke and told him he was the organizer, and then asked him if he would keep quiet. The duke said that first he wanted to thank the son of their empire for his presence, and secondly he wanted to sincerely thank all those who came today to wish their Avelia a happy birthday. The duke said that his daughter would light the way for the Artin family, and then he stood behind Eva and said seriously that he hoped that no one present would ever stand in the way of the Artin family. After the Duke's words, everyone remained petrified, and the Emperor at this time began to laugh and told the Duke that he had a difficult character, and at this time a man turned to the Duke and told him that it was an honor for him to be present at their festivities. This man said that while he was traveling around the Empire he managed to get a beautiful bracelet, and that this trace is unlike anything he has seen before for he was told that this theater contains magical power. The duke answered nothing to the man, and at this time another man turned to him and said that the lady of the feast was truly beautiful, and to them it was amazing how much she resembled the duke's wife. And at this time the duke smiled and thanked the man and said that if he was not mistaken, the man was the Count of Cerny. All said, just look at the cute Ava because they think that just to change the color of her hair to turquoise and she will be just like a duchess. That just by her blue eyes, it is clear that she is the daughter of a duchess. And at this time, the duke said to everyone that there is no need to make a fuss about such obvious things. At this point, the little girl didn't understand anything, but it seems she got bored. And at one point, a man approached and told the duke that they hadn't seen each other for a long time and congratulated him on their daughter's birthday. And this man's name is Lucius de Font, and he is a Marquis. This Marquis looked at the little girl, and Eva at the same time looked at him furiously, and thought that she didn't like this man at all, and thought that he was laughing at her face. And he at the same time said that in particular, and her eyes are just adorable. The Marquis told the Duke that he should have gone to the estate to congratulate them in person, 
and he apologized. But the Duke said that it was all right, and even better that he had not wasted his time, since they had not been receiving guests lately. The Marquis Lucius said that he almost broke etiquette, and that he had heard that the Marquis Cassus had visited them, but he said that apparently the capital's rumors could not be trusted, and yet he looked at one point very angry, but still smiling. The Duke said that it was not quite so, and that he meant that they did not accept uninvited guests. But the little girl thought that the atmosphere was getting hot, and her brother, seeing that the girl was not quite satisfied, took her in his arms and offered her a little walk. Little Ava was sitting with her brothers and eating some goodies, but then Cedric asked Arkan why her father was acting like that. And Arkan said that since Her Majesty the Empress died a year ago, the current Chrome Prince is the next claimant to the Imperial throne. Arkan says that a year ago, after Empress Luana died of an illness, all power in the palace passed into the hands of the Emperor's concubine Beneke, and in the highest circles, there were many who wanted to put Prince Edwin on the throne, bypassing the direct heir. But unfortunately, the situation is serious. The crown prince still retains his right to the throne, and he is a natural-born emperor. But the fact that he has no proper maternal relatives could be fatal. Here we learn that the Marquis of De Fonte is using the situation to get close to the crown prince. And if the crown prince ascends to the throne, the Marquis could easily be in favor and it is even possible that he will take the duke's place. Arkin says that is why he and their father have such a close relationship. And listening to all this, little Ava was very much surprised, but suddenly the little girl began to see everything vaguely and could not understand whether her eyesight could be spoiled at such a young age. It turns out to our heroine appeared to a small spirit, but the little girl could not understand what was happening and thought that it is a horror. But that little spirit said, that she is a person with the mark of the Lord and that she is the only creature that has received his blessing. It turns out our heroine can talk to this spirit just by thinking about what she wants to say. And at that moment, our heroine asked the spirit if she is the right person. And this spirit said that it is true and that she is the first person who understands them, although they did not make a contract. The little spirit told Ava that her energy is pure like the Lord's and said that it is very refreshing and that it feels good to be near her. But our heroine asked the spirit who the Lord is, and the spirit started to explain to her that all the people are not there because of him, and they are called to protect him. The spirit said that he is the Lord who commands all the waters of this world and offered our heroine to make a deal with them. But our heroine could not understand what kind of deal is in question. But the spirit said that all did not wait, until the young body of the little heroine mature enough to cope with the terms of the deal. The spirit told Ava that from now on, they would protect her. But the little heroine could not understand how fish like them would protect her, and said that it seemed to her that she had to protect them so that someone would not inadvertently hook them with a fishing rod. The spirit said that she had not heard, and they would really protect her. But our heroine said that they would now be her friends, but it seems that the spirit was a little displeased and said that the rumors were not lying about the fact that she is not an ordinary person and told our heroine to repeat after him. Ava said she couldn't speak yet, but the spirits told her that it was enough that she just thought she wanted to say I wouldn't hear her. And then they told her to repeat the spell after them. After our heroine said the spell, she sighed and thought it would be a big deal if anyone found out about her arrangement with the spirits. So she thought it was best to keep it a secret for now. After a few seconds, our heroine could not understand why it became so quiet, and then she noticed that everyone began to stare at her. But she could not understand what came over everyone. But it turns out that our heroine has a mark on her forehead. It turned out that on the forehead of the spiritual magicians have a seal that distinguish only the spirits themselves. But especially in the first transaction in which the connection of a person with the spirits imprinted on his soul and about 10 minutes mark on the forehead lights up blinding flash of light. Is the only time people can see the seal, and it is enough to discern the nature of spirits. And these very words were written in the Heron Publishing House, on page 605. Our heroine also had this mark, and all people saw it, and of course everyone saw her mark and could not believe their eyes. But our heroine could not understand at this time what came over everyone, and why everyone is looking at her like that. 
Ava thought she did something wrong, but at that moment her brothers hugged her tightly, and Cedric told them not to look at her, and then asked them how dare they look at his sister so disrespectfully. Then Arkin looked at the little girl and asked her if it was the seal of the spirits, but that Marquis said it could not be, for she was only a year old, but a man told the duke to look at her himself if he did not believe it. This man said that there was no, no doubt that the duke's daughter's forehead flashed a seal of water. But at this moment the little girl looked frightened, and at this moment the emperor looked at all this chaos and asked for silence. The emperor told everyone that it could not be said with certainty that the pattern on the duke's daughter's forehead was the seal of the spirit. And then he asked if they thought the little girl could make a pact with the spirits, and told everyone to think about it. Well, the little girl is only one year old. The emperor smilingly asked if there had ever before happened in Artan's family an event more momentous than this. And then he added that there was no doubt that the spirits were blessing their glorious empire. The emperor looked at Cedric, who was holding his sister in his arms with fear, and asked him if he could take their princess for a while. But at that moment, the little girl thought it was some nightmare where it seemed that the emperor was not himself. The duke intervened in all this and told his majesty that he thought he should first calm down a little. But at that moment the emperor became angry and shouting asked the duke if he wanted to say that the emperor was not calm. The emperor said that there were rumors all over the world that their empire had lost the patronage of the spirits and that their former glory was a thing of the past. But at that moment the little girl's brothers asked his majesty to calm down. Our little heroine at this moment thought about something and she realized that the emperor is the master of the father, and if it is so, it is considered the bread of their family, and about food that do not say our heroine is considered the most important in this world. Then the emperor approached the little girl, and she at that moment grabbed his clothes and pulled herself up to him, and it seems that everyone was surprised by this, and our heroine began to smile and thought that she would not let go of her bread so easily. The emperor began to laugh and took the little girl in his arms and told everyone to just look because their little princess recognized her father's friend. And then the emperor expressed his great gratitude to the little girl and said that he hoped that in the future she would take care of their hereditary prince. At this moment, our heroine thought that she did not understand why they should ask such a thing of her. But the emperor said that it was excellent and thanked the little girl again. But it seems that at this time, the Marquis was not very pleased, for he looked at them with anger. The Emperor asked everyone if they had heard everything, and then he said that after so many years of waiting, a spirit mage had finally been born in their country, and told everyone that it was imperative to inform all the people of the Empire about it. The Emperor informed everyone that starting today, a three-day festival would be held in the capital to celebrate the birth of the new spiritual magician and that they all needed to prepare for it. Sometime later we find ourselves back at the Duke's mansion, where Alicia, the Duke's wife, says that she thinks the festival is still going on. And the Duke seems surprised by this, but says that the scars of the first war with the demons have not yet healed. The Duke says that even a child knows that the complete opposite of a demon is a spirit, but he does not understand if the very existence of a spirit mage is not directly related to the security of the country, but then he said that it is still a significant event. The duke and his wife noticed that he was somehow confused and asked him what had happened to him or whether the Marquis de Font had done something again, but the duke said that none of this had happened because he did not understand what business he had with the Marquis, yes, and besides he was definitely not to bear his head. Evelia then asked her husband what was wrong with him, and the duke said that he was worried that he wasn't sure if they would be able to protect their Ava, and then his wife said that she was worried about it too. Evelia said that their daughter's abilities were revealed right in front of all the nobles in the banquet hall, and she is afraid that now many people will try to get close to them. But her husband said that she is right, because their daughter is not only charming, but also has outstanding abilities. The duke said he wanted to take and pluck out the eyes of all these capital chiggers, but his wife asked him what he meant. And the duke said he was talking about introducing knights to Ava as guards before this brainless rabble did anything to their little girl. Evelia couldn't believe what she was hearing, 
as she said she didn't understand who in their right mind would dare threaten the safety of their little girl. But after a few seconds, she said that she still agreed that introducing a knight to her was a good idea. The Duke said that if that's the case, he'd probably have to call those types back to the capital, and his wife agreed with him, because she said that if they wanted to protect him, they'd have to do everything to do it. And her husband said that he thought he could hear them barking. Somewhere else, the knights are talking among themselves, and one knight, Arton named Harold, asked Knight Twain if he had heard that he was selecting knights for the defense of their mistress, and Twain said he refused, since he didn't understand what fun there could be if there were no demons or underdogs from the kingdom. The Herald began to laugh and said that he too had refused because there was only boredom in the capital. But another knight named Alec entered their conversation and said that they said that the young mistress was very much like her mother, and at that his eyes began to shine as if they were glowing. Alec offered his friends to buy their mistress a present, but it seems that the other guys were surprised by this offer. But Alec grabbed the head of some monster and asked the guys what they thought if they took it and dried it well, and then they could use it as a decoration. The Herald and Twain told Alec he was a fool. But at that moment, another fellow was listening. But he seems to be hiding under a tree, and by his clothes we can tell he's a knight too. And at that moment, he asked himself what kind of man the young lady might be. It's no secret that even among the knights in the service of the emperor himself, they have no equal. And instead of sitting quietly in the capital, enjoying all the benefits and riches, they personally went to fight demons in the northern lands. It's been two years since the Duke of Arena banished them to the north, since their mere presence could cause trouble for those around them. The knights of Artan's favorite pastime is destroying what's left of the old kingdom. Most of all, their main passion is to hunt the higher demons, but there were no other such scum in the north. Well, they've already returned to the capital, and a man tells them that the duke thanks them all for their loyal service. This man's name is Hoddle, and one of the knights told Hoddle that it's been years since they've seen each other since they've seen each other, and it seems to them that he's refreshed in that time. And then they started mocking them and asked him if he had a girlfriend after all. Then the other knight also started to mock and asked Hadil if he was seeing someone, but Hadil said he wasn't, and then the same knight said to look at his dull eyes, because he thinks she's probably already dumped him. At that moment, Hadil asked God to give him the strength to endure them. It turns out it's been about ten years since he was made butler to the Arton family, and he doesn't want it all to go to shit because of these assholes. The Herald asked Hadel what they were having for dinner tonight, and then asked them what they thought of the full barbecue for he thought he had seen one around here somewhere, but Hadell said he thought the Duchess herself was watching him. The Herald told the lads to wait a little while, for he would go and bring it, and at that moment, Hadell tried to stop him, but he did not listen, and at that moment, Hadell thought that he could not understand why the Master had called these forces uncouth. Suddenly, little Ava came up to them and called out to Hadel, and Twain was very surprised, and said that he thought he heard someone squeak. But when he turned around, he saw the little girl who asked him who he was, and it seems that everyone left their mouths open. Hadil approached the mistress and told her to get acquainted, as these are their thugs. And then he shuddered and said that these are the Knights of Artin. And then he said that these guys took the oath of allegiance and her father, and now serve under him. Ava seemed surprised that they were knights and looked at them in surprise. And at that moment, Twain introduced himself to the lady and said that he would be her personal bodyguard. And then Eva repeated the word bodyguard after him. But because of her age, Eva twisted some of the words. After Twain introduced himself, the herald popped through and said he was the one who would be her personal bodyguard. And the mistress could call him Harold. And he also said he was just a master story reader. Then Alec sat down beside the little mistress and said something to her. But one of them asked him what he was saying in the presence of their mistress, to which he replied that he had not said anything terrible. But at that moment our heroine thought that it was so noisy but at the same time very funny. Then little Ava took one berry from her basket and offered it to Alec. She said it was a present, and then she said hi. And at that moment the boys were mortified and Alec said he wouldn't go up north again. Then he said that he would not go back there, because he no longer needed demons or soldiers of the kingdom. And at that moment, they were approached by a man who greeted them that they had served well. 
The boys said that the Knights of Arton reported their return and greeted his lordship with a chorus of cheers, and when the Duke wanted to say something else, little Ava repeated after them that she was reporting her arrival to his lordship. These three grimaced and approached the mistress, ask her what she had just said. But Hadell told them that the Duke was standing before them, but it was as if they had not heard him, and asked the little girl if she could say it again. Then the boys told the Duke that Ava was just a cutie, and at that moment Ava ran to her father and hugged him. But at that moment, seeing how they grimaced at the sight of Ava, he thought there would be a big fuss, since only one person was needed for the role of permanent bodyguard. A month later, the knights were at the training ground, and at that moment Ava approached them again and told the knights that now they should take a break. But the herald sat down next to the lady and asked her what she was doing at the training ground. Ava told them to just look at her, and she pulled out some goodies from her purse and told them it was her adventure purse, at which point the boys thought it looked more like their mistress was going on a picnic than an adventure. One of the guys told the little girl that she was a real adventurer because she took only the most important things with her. But he thought she was right to do it, because such unnecessary things as beef, sleeping bags, and knives are better left to them. At this point, the brother of the baby told her that she cannot travel alone and suggested that she better brother to keep her company, and our baby agreed with him. And then, smiling, suggested that all together to go on a trip. At that moment, the herald told the mistress that they were ready to go with her to catch the demon king, and then Alec asked the mistress if she didn't want to hear their adventures first, and our heroine smilingly agreed with them, at which point the duke approached them and told them to moderate, and asked them if they thought it was time to go back to the range, and the herald asked the duke what he was saying, or if he couldn't see that their mistress had almost been hit by a leaf, and then they said it was their little girl. The duke just looked at them and couldn't say anything, and then he looked at the cutie and asked which one of them was worthy of being her bodyguard. And our hero remained stone-faced. Everyone surrounded little Ava, and our heroine looked around and thought she already knew who would protect her, and looked back at Alec and said that she chose him. The cutie was very happy and went up to him, and the guy at the same time was also very happy and looked at the baby while smiling. But at the same time, all the other guys were shocked and said that this cannot be. Later... The duke called Alec to him, and looking out the window, he told the guy that he was too young. And at that moment, the guy thought that it probably won't work out. But at that moment, the duke said that this also means that he has room to grow in the future. And hearing these words, the guy was very much surprised. Alec was happy, but still he couldn't expect such a thing. And at that moment, the duke smilingly asked the boy to take care of their Ava, and the boy told his lordship that it was out of the question because of course it would be like that. Then the boy remembered the acquaintance with the Duke. It was a terrible night where the boy was running from someone, and at one moment he tripped on a rock and fell to the ground. But looking closer, we see how the boy has scratches and cuts. The boy stood on the ground while three guys approached him, and one of them asked Alec if he thought he could run away from them, and then said that of course killing a child is not the most pleasant thing to do. But as he said, an order is an order. One of the guys told the orphan that they were good to him, and at that moment he tried to kill the guy, but out of nowhere came the duke who protected our guy, and he seemed surprised enough to realize that he wasn't dead. The boy looked at the duke while he told him that if he wanted to, he could follow him because he would give him a chance. And then the boy got up from the ground and followed the duke. But at that moment, he thought it was a ray of light in the darkness. The boy thought that the duke had brought him out of poverty and made him a respected knight, and instead of becoming a simple assassin, he went to destroy those who were a threat to their empire. And from that day, the Duke of Arten became a light and god to him, and returning to reality, Alex swore to the duke that his blade and soul belonged completely to the lady. Another bright day came where our little girl was sweetly and soundly asleep in her crib, holding a teddy bear in her arms, as one of her brothers appears, and with a little squeezing finger asked Eva if she was still asleep. The little girl woke up and her brother told her that the sun was high and she was still sleeping, but the little girl said it was not true because it was still morning, and her brother said it was true, but he thought that only little children stay in bed so long. Cedric asked his sister if she had recently told him to treat her like an adult, 
because the little girl had recently told him she was an adult and asked him to teach her how to sword fight. The little girl paid no attention to this and said she had changed her mind and asked Cedric to take her in his arms. And a little later, Cedric and his sister came to breakfast, and their older brother asked who had recently claimed she was an adult and why she had come in Cedric's arms. The little girl held her brother in her arms and opened one eye and said she was a little girl in the morning and an adult in the evening. And then she said that it was morning, so she was a child and said her brother didn't understand. And Cedric put his sister on a chair and said that their Ava was still a child. The little girl recovered a little, and opening her eyes well, she noticed an envelope in front of her and asked her brothers what it was. And the boys at that time told her that they did not know what it could be. And opening this envelope, the little girl was surprised and said that it was an invitation in the name of Evelia von Artina. After breakfast, the little girl was walking along the corridors, and at that time, the herald was going somewhere and suddenly heard some sounds, and it was our little girl. But at first, the guy couldn't understand what it was. Then he saw the little girl who called him. The herald got very excited and greeted the lady and took the little girl in his arms, and at that time the little girl put an envelope in his face and told the herald to look, and then reading it, the boy realized that it was a letter of invitation from the Marquis of Cassis. The little girl at first did not understand who is this Cassis, and the guy began to explain to her that since ancient times the Cassis family was famous for many outstanding wizards, and the current Marquis Cassis is a close battle companion of His Majesty the Emperor and their Lord Duke. The Herald says that they all went through a lot of hardships together, and after that she asked the little lady who he would play with if she went to the Marquis, and the little lady at that time confidently told the boy that he was already grown up and could play by himself and asked him when he would grow up. At this time, the Herald thought he couldn't believe that a three-year-old girl the size of tea mugs was asking him when he'd grow up, and then he thought it was too much, but all because he was dying for her sweetness. A few days later, the whole Arton family was on their way to visit the Marquis, and while Eva's parents were getting into the carriage, our sweetie was playing with the guardians, and it seems one of them was asking the little girl to spare him, and at that moment, the Duchess told her daughter that they were leaving. The little girl told the boys she'd be back soon, and they were practically in tears as they said goodbye to her, and the Herald asked Eve to wait a little while, and then he asked her to repeat what they had just taught her. The little girl agreed and said she had it all memorized, and at that point they asked her what to do if a demon showed up on the road, and the little girl said to scare it and faked it a little. At that moment, one of the guys started to say that it was very nice, but he stopped and said that it was very threatening. And then he thought that the demons would not really attack or they would destroy them. And then another guy asked Mrs. what to say to the stranger who will offer to eat together. The little girl started to show what she'd do and said she'd say she didn't want to ask if he was okay with it. And then the guy was asked what she'd do if someone stroked her head and Ava said she'd just kick him. The guys asked the little girl where she would kick and she said in the crotch, and Alec told the mistress that she was a great girl, and he thought that the mistress's legs were a bit short, and therefore, she would not reach the most important places. And lastly, the boys asked what she would do if someone dragged her somewhere, and the little girl said that she would scream and call the knights. And it was after this that the boys said that she should do so, but at this point the duke said that according to his remarks and not wasted time with Eva did not waste time. The Duchess thought that her husband was a good man, and that someone should finally tell them to stop teaching her all the time to do stupid things. But then, the Duke did not live up to his wife's expectations, because he said that finally the Knights had done something worthwhile, and that they could stop practicing today, and everyone was free. The Duke's wife didn't quite like it, and thought her husband was a fool when it came to his daughter, and the Knights seemed to be downcast, but ended up even more exuberant. For at that moment, they approached the carriage and asked the Lord to take them with him. The Duke told the boys that only Heron and Eden were going with them. But the boys were very upset because they wanted to be close to the cute Ava. But at that moment, the Duchess thought that she had no idea what would happen when Ava grew up. On the road, the little girl saw a stuffed hare sitting on the road and she told her father to look. But at that moment, the Duke shouted to his servants to tell them to go and buy a toy hare. 
and they unconditionally obeyed the Lord. Ava thought she just wanted to show her father how big the hair was, but at that moment her father said he would make her a bear friend. But her brothers were surprised and asked who it was, and then their father says that this bear will be Avelia's only friend in eating, sleeping, and playing. Duke says that it is a master toy bear that will nevertheless complete the existing forest of toys. But at that moment, Eva began to feel sad and think of her friend, and then asked Cedric if she could find a lot of friends where they are going. Cedric said that in addition to them, there will be children from other families, so he thinks that the little girl will be able to find friends there. And hearing this, our little heroine was very surprised, and at the same time pleased. Duke a little upset, and then we learn that the only Duke of the Empire has glory is as great but also heavy, because many for the sake of casual gain put on the guise of benevolence and get close to the Duke, and others trying to find out his weaknesses stepped into open hostility. The Duke thought that in this situation, finding a true friend would be like grasping a star, and he hoped that Ava's star wouldn't get hurt, and that the truth about the world wouldn't hurt her too much because the little girl wants to make lots and lots of friends. The Artin family had already reached the Marquis Mansion, and they were immediately welcomed with open arms and a broad smile. And the Marquis told the Duke that they had not seen each other for a long time, and that he did not even remember the last time the Duke had been to them. The Duke said he held back and didn't come until he himself showed up at his office in the Imperial Palace and begged him tearfully to come and the Marquis said that they really wanted to see his daughter more than him. The Marquis told the Duke that even if he came to visit them, he would probably hide the little girl from him. And at that moment, our little heroine bowed to the Marquis and greeted him and wished their family magical prosperity. And then she introduced herself and said that her name was Evelia Artina. After that, Marquis said that their little princess had grown a lot since they hadn't seen each other. And after that, he told the little girl to meet his son and daughter, and after that, the guy introduced himself as Icrian Cassis. And after that, he said it was a pleasure to meet him. The boy kissed Ava's hand and thanked her from the bottom of his heart for visiting them. But our little girl thought that she had a feeling that one move, and there would be bloodshed, because this boy didn't seem very nice to her. At that moment, Ava's older brother told her that she should not get close to the heir of the Cassis family, Icrian, because he says that this boy is a bully because he will not spare a pretty sheep. But our heroine was a little surprised by this. Ava thought she felt that way too. For as soon as her brother said that, and she immediately realized that this boy looked like a fox, or rather, a very sweet-tempered fox. But then Marquis asked his daughter if she didn't say hello to their guests. This girl was very nice, and she had very long, beautiful lilac hair, and leaned down and said that her name was Lillian Cassis, and that she hoped that she and the little girl would be friends. But our heroine was surprised enough that the girl said about friendship. Marquis said that their Lillian is weak, and that she has no friends at all, and that's why he thinks that his girl will be incredibly happy if our heroine becomes her friend. But our heroine thought that she does not know how to be. Little Lillian thought that our heroine is the daughter of a duke, and a noble and noble family of Arkin and she thinks that she may well not like such a weak and cowardly girl like her. But at that moment, our little girl approached Lillian, and holding her hand offered the girl to become friends. Our lovely heroine Ava smilingly said that she hoped that Lillian wouldn't mind being her friend too. And at that moment, Lillian thought that sometimes you don't need any reason to become true friends, and she thought that in the future, they would often remember this time, namely the moment when their eyes first met and the moment when they intuitively felt that they would be friends for eternity. Everyone was already in the living room of the Cassis family, and Lillian was treating our little mistress to a snack. And at one point, she asked our heroine if she wanted more. Our little girl told Lillian to call her Ava, but she said she didn't dare. And then she said it was really nice of her. But at that moment, the Ikran looked at our little girl and said that now he understood who they were so proud of all day long. This guy said their little girl has adorable golden hair, ocean-colored eyes, and a favorite perfume. And then he said that no matter how you look at her, you can tell she's strikingly different from Lillian, because she's like a star, a little star. After these words, one of the brothers told him not to even dream if he didn't want them to help him to the other side of the world. 
But at that moment, Ikran told him not to worry because he liked older women. Because as he said, a mature lady is much better than an unintelligent child. The guys couldn't understand what this guy was talking about. And at one point, Arkin told him to look at him. But he said that he felt sorry for the poor guy that our heroine would love since he would have to deal with the two of them. And he considers it a constant pain in the head. At this point, Cedric got angry and yelled at the guy telling him that he would never let her have a lover. But he thought that Arkin was headache number two and that the poor guy was going to have a hard time. Ikran thought that he didn't know who would be her boyfriend. But by the looks of it, his life would hang in the balance every second. But at that moment, the girls didn't even pay attention to the fact that the guys were fighting because they were having fun together and playing. A little later, the butler invited everyone to go to a picnic in their lovely garden, a picnic for adults, and at this time all the boys were together, and they reached the park where there were many children, and at this time some were playing, some were screaming, and some were crying. At this point, Arkan thought it was hell, and he thought if hell existed it looked like this. But then Ikran suggested Arkan to go and spar, because as he said, it seems to him that something lately and not a little time is given to training. Arkan said that finally there was a worthwhile idea, and at that moment Cedric said that he was going with them, because swordsmanship was very important. And he thought that looking at this hell, even swordsmanship would seem like a worthwhile endeavor. After that, Cedric asked what will happen to Ava and Liliana, but after that, he suggested that they should go with them and play. But our heroine said that she would stay here. Apparently, she felt that it would be interesting. And Liliana said that then she would stay in this place too because she wanted to be together with Ava. After this, Ikran a little sad because he thought that his sister never left him, not a step. But then told the girls that if someone will offend them, they can immediately call them. But our little heroine told him not to worry because she can stand up for herself. At this point, her brothers thought they knew how she could stand up for herself, and Arkin told the little girl to just call them in case of trouble, not to take it to the extreme, and our little girl quietly agreed with him. The butler of the house thought that he hoped that nothing would happen to the girls, because he thinks that it would not be enough for them to have to look at blood at such a young age. But our heroine, together with her new friend, approached the other guys. Other guys looked at our heroine and wondered, and someone told everyone to look at her, because it seems to him that it is the daughter of the Duke of Artan, and then said that his father said that she was beautiful, but he did not think that she is so beautiful, because he thinks that it is just a look. Someone said that her hair was very shiny, but it seems that at this point our heroine started to worry and started to think, and to convince herself that she wasn't nervous, and she thought that everyone around her was just rocks, boulders with eyes, ears, and mouths. At that moment, a girl came up to our heroine and said that she had heard a lot about her and then introduced herself and said that her name was Morrigan Karen and she was the daughter of Count Karen. And at the moment when our heroine wanted to say that she was glad to meet her other guys approached her. One girl said that she was of the Abel family and another that she was the daughter of some count, while another girl invited our heroine to tea with them if she could. But our heroine thought that it seemed to her that it was time to fight not for life, but for death. Our heroine did not know what to do, as suddenly a girl approached her and asked her if she was the daughter of the Duke of Artin. And then she greeted our heroine saying that her name is Ceres and is the daughter of the Marquise of Defont. Our little girl had already sat down and told the girl that she was glad to meet her, and then introduced herself as Ivalia Artina. But the girl asked if our heroine had not been taught that showing up at a party and causing such a commotion is not a sign of good manners. Our heroine could not understand anything, but the girl continued and said that our heroine apparently has not yet fully understood the rules of etiquette, but advised her not to worry because she will help her, and then said that when several people simultaneously greet her, she should stand up and politely accept them. Our little girl did not understand why this girl told her this, but she continued and said that according to her remarks, our mistress still does not know a lot, but added that it is not terrible and nothing to be ashamed of, because according to her, our heroine is still very young. Ava noticed the name Defonte and couldn't understand where she had heard that name, but after a few seconds she remembered that it was the same slippery type Defonte. 
And then she realized that this girl was his daughter.